Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes inside of Lightroom because some of you requested that I share my export settings. So what settings and numbers I'm using in order to export my images for wedding clients in high resolution JPEGs. But before we dive in, I just wanna remind you guys, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, go ahead and hit it so that you don't miss out on future videos. I make videos just like this one every single week. When I am exporting images out of Lightroom, I am 99% of the time exporting them as high resolution JPEGs as like an archival version of the photograph. So I'm not doing really small or special sized images. I'm trying to get the biggest, most beautiful JPEG that I can so that I can throw it on a hard drive and into a cloud and back it up so that if something were to happen in the future, I would always have that really beautiful big JPEG. Now, of course, this isn't as good as having a raw file, but it's how I archive my images in addition to the raw files. So anyway, let's dive in. This is how I export my images in Lightroom. Here we are inside of Lightroom. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is click the export button. So you have to be inside of the library module. You'll see up here in the library uh, tab, but you need to be inside of there in order to export your images. You hit the export button and this is what pops up. So you have a few different options here. So let me close these up and let's, let's go through these one by one and really focus on these answers, okay? So, your export location. This is the first thing that you have to decide when you're exporting out of Lightroom. You have to decide where is the file going to go on your computer or on a hard drive or that kind of thing. So what I can do is choose a specific folder. If I have already named a folder and I want those high res JPEGs to go into that folder, this would be the time to grab that. Now what I do is I say a specific folder because as a part of my workflow, I just really like to have the images go into a folder here on my desktop and I name that something useful. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, this, okay? YouTube test C. So I have a system where I'll name the folder something useful, but I always end in a C if it has been color corrected and it's done. And that's just a system that I picked up early on from lessons that I watched of Jared Platt over on Creative Live. Um, and that's basically what I do. So you have a folder, you know where they're going. Now, this is where we decide how we're gonna name that file. So what I like to do is make sure that I name the images in a way that is useful and search engine friendly. So I name them something to do with either myself, the people in the session or the date. So this is where you'll name your photo and this is how your photo is going to appear. Um, its name will appear. Okay, you can change the start number. So basically right here, you see it says one of 15. You can change that start number. Another option you have is to not custom name or you can custom name and then add a sequence or a file number um, or just a date. So you, this is really just the name of your photograph. How is it going to come out? This video is not relevant. Now we have our file settings. Now I'm going to be using JPEG and I want the quality to be at 100. The color space, you want it to be sRGB if you want this to be ready for print. Image quality. So this is a big one. This is something really important. Now, if I am doing an archival JPEG, which I would like to show you here today, I'm going to not resize to fit anything. I'm going to put resolution at 300, which means it is ready to go into high res printing. And then by not choosing a restriction on the short edge or the long edge, basically you're going to get the biggest, best looking JPEG possible. Now, you can resize to fit any edge. Say you're going to be on a blog and you want it to be by 1080 or you want to be on YouTube or a certain size. You can find the best sizes online on you know Pinterest and there are lots of graphics about what size you should make your images. But if you're making a archival JPEG, in my opinion, you shouldn't limit the size because you can always go back and change that size. But if you, you really can't, add size to it, if that makes sense. So that's what I do. You can also sharpen the image. I do not sharpen, but you can sharpen for the screen and the amount can be standard. So you choose your sharpening amounts. The metadata is any keywords and Lightroom information that you put into the file when you were originally creating the file and importing it. So I have a lot of import tags that make it a lot easier for me to find the images. So I go ahead and I write them 
to the keywords in the image. Watermarking, this is something you could do. You can add watermark to any of your images. This has to be done. You have to pre-make and create your watermark in um, Lightroom prior to the creation of the file. So you have to create your watermark, save it, and then your watermark will show up in here. I don't watermark my images for archive, so I'm not going to choose that. The last decision that you get to make is in your post-processing. So after it exports, what do you want it to do? A lot of times people want to open up in Photoshop, make a few different changes. Um, so what I do is nothing. I don't want this to pop up and interrupt anything that I'm doing. So I know that I can just go ahead and find that file on my computer when I'm done. So once I'm happy with these settings, I say, okay, we're going to export these files. Lightroom's going to go ahead and start exporting these files. So I went ahead onto my computer and I found the test and I'm going to go ahead and open this up. You'll notice that the file is not limited in size. This is the biggest JPEG that is possible. It's named what we named it at the top and we're able to zoom in many times and still have a really sharp image. I mean, this is a big, big file. Let's look at the exact size of the file. We can see that here. We're ranging between, you know, nine and 11 megabytes. So there you have it. That is how I export my images. If you want more help with Lightroom and more insider knowledge of like how I use Lightroom, what presets I use, all of that kind of stuff, I have a whole playlist. I'm going to link it in the cards and down below so that you can watch more of that if you want to dive a little bit deeper into Lightroom. So anyway, guys, I hope that you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you guys next week. Bye, guys.